Hi everyone, it's Dr. A, and in this video, we're going to discuss the movements, muscles, and compartments of the hip and thigh. In total, we have six primary movements of the hip, and the first two that we'll take a look at include hip flexion and hip extension. So as shown here in our first picture to the left, we have hip flexion, and hip flexion involves movement of the femur anteriorly. And to our right, we have hip extension pictured, which involves movement of the femur posteriorly. Next up, we have hip adduction, and we can describe this as movement of the femur laterally or away from the midline of the body. And for hip adduction, we'd say that it is movement of the femur medially or toward the midline of the body. And our last two movements are hip external and internal rotation. And again, using our femur as the basis for movement, we can describe hip external rotation as a lateral rotary movement of the femur away from the midline of the body. And hip internal rotation would of course be medial rotary movement of the femur toward the midline of the body. So now that we've gotten a review of the movements taking place at the hip, let's take a moment to talk about the muscle compartments of the thigh. And as we do this, let's first highlight the location of the femur, which is right here. Now, if we were to create a transverse cross-section of the thigh musculature, what we'd see are muscles neatly organized into compartments. And specifically, we'd see three compartments, the anterior, medial, and posterior compartments. And within the anterior compartment, we'd find the vastus intermedius, the vastus lateralis, rectus femoris, and the vastus medialis, which make up the quadriceps musculature. But within this compartment, we'd also find the sartorius muscle as well. Now, moving over to our medial compartment, we'll find the adductor longus and adductor magnus. And although it's not pictured on this diagram, we'd also find the adductor brevis muscle. So in total, all of our adductor musculature belong to the medial compartment. In addition, however, we'll also find the gracilis muscle in this compartment as well. Lastly is our posterior compartment, and it's here that we'll find the hamstring musculature which includes the biceps femoris, the semitendinosus, and the semimembranosus muscles. Now, for context, all of the musculature that we've looked at are located within the thigh, but we also have muscles that attach to the pelvis, which influence and determine movement at the hip as well. So let's start by looking at the lateral musculature of the pelvis, which influences movement at the hip. First, we have the gluteus medius and the gluteus minimus musculature. Additionally, we also have a muscle called the tensor fascia latte, which continues inferiorly to form the IT band. Now, what's unique is that we have a group of muscles that are called the six deep external rotators. And these muscles are considered to be posterior and lateral musculature of the pelvis and hip. These muscles include the piriformis, superior gemellus, obturator internus, inferior gemellus, quadratus femoris, and the obturator externus. And if we move toward the anterior portion of the pelvis, we'll find a group of muscles that are collectively called the hip flexor muscles. This includes the psoas minor, the iliacus, and the psoas major muscles. And on the posterior aspect of the pelvis, we have the large gluteus maximus muscle. Now, what's helpful here is that the compartments and or location of our muscles give us an idea about the primary action these muscles perform. So collectively, we have muscles of the hip and thigh that are posterior, anterior, lateral, and medial. And for our muscles that are located posteriorly, the primary action they perform is hip extension. 
For those that are anterior, the action they perform is primarily hip flexion. Now, on the lateral aspect, the primary movement performed by these muscles is hip abduction. And for the muscles on the medial aspect, the primary action performed here is hip adduction. So let's list the muscles underneath each of their respective locations. Posteriorly, we have the gluteus maximus, biceps femoris, semitendinosus, semimembranosus, and the six deep external rotators. And by the name, six deep external rotators, we also can note that they help perform external rotation of the hip. Anteriorly, we have the iliacus, the psoas major, psoas minor, rectus femoris, and the sartorius. Laterally, we have the gluteus medius, gluteus minimus, the tensor fascia latte, and the six deep external rotators. And medially, we have the adductor magnus, adductor longus, adductor brevis, and the gracilis. So again, just by knowing the location of a given muscle, we have an idea about the action and or actions the muscle performs. Well, thank you for watching this video. I hope it's been helpful and I'll look forward to connecting with you again in the next video.